Thank you. <clears throat> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who loved you with his life. Amen, and so be it. We have this word honor today that, uh, that we're going to try and flesh out just a little bit, but the, generally the idea of honor, I think, has to do with uh, one of two things. One, either you have honor that's led by your own pride that sets you up in front of everybody so everybody gets to see, gets to hear, gets to know your name, and so that you can leave a legacy that ever, everybody will remember. It's all about you. And then there's an honor which Jesus speaks about in terms of, of humility. There's that, that kind of gigantic last phrase to our text this morning um, that speaks of you are to become the servant of all or everyone which on the kind of basis level of things really strikes us as impossible. One, because, well, we have to serve everyone, and two, that's not very fun. But as we think of honor, you know, there's, there's moments, I guess especially in my life, that, that I have to be in front of people and, and people have to see me. And, and I, I, I really don't like it. I would rather, I'd rather just kind of sit there and, and, and hide, maybe even preach from sitting down that you wouldn't have to look for me. That would be really nice. And yet, sometimes you're put into position. This morning when I got up, it was, you know, very early. I, I couldn't sleep because every time I preach, I can't sleep. And so I, I tried to be quiet. I, I put on, you know, what I assumed was at least something decent looking because you have to look good, right? And uh, driving in the car, I made my coffee and everything's going good. I, I'm kind of processing what I'm going to say today. And, and I get here and I look and the sun's finally come up and I'd spilled coffee all over my shirt. And I thought, you know, that's just perfect for me today because the, there is no honor. There shouldn't be any honor given to this guy today. There should be honor only in the fact that Jesus Christ lives and he always will. And that's the key, I think. Because I could almost hear you saying uh, from your voices about this. It's not about you. It's about this Jesus. We want you to deliver Jesus today and we want you to, to tell us what honor truly is in terms of what he thinks. As we look at the text to understand how, how James and John truly did mess up, how they truly didn't listen, there's, there's, the way the text flows is, is really quite brilliant. That Jesus is finally, this is his third passion predict, prediction in the book of Mark. And after each one, the disciples mess up. They, they can't figure out what the kingdom truly is. And this third time, it's very, it, he's very vivid with his words. So Peter messed up the first time. You know, the first time when... Uh, Peter says, uh, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And then Jesus says, well, I'm going to die. You know this, right? I'm going to die, but then on the third day, ra be raised to life. And Peter pulls him aside and says, no, Lord, that'll never happen. Jesus rebukes him. Here in the, this third prediction, it gets very vivid. Jesus says, I'm going to die, and it's going to be a vivid death. They're going to beat me. They're going to punch me. They're going to kick me. They're going to spit on me. And finally, they're going to stick me to a cross. And I'm going to die vividly, and then I'm going to rise from the dead. We can't forget that one. And yet you, you have James and John. Um, now remember this, James and John and Peter generally, whenever you talk about the inner circle of things, there's always these three. Peter's messed up. So it, it feels like James and John are taking the opportunity to finally step aside out of Peter's shadow and actually grasp onto things. Jesus has just said vividly, I'm going to die. And their response, what they hear is that they're, Jesus says, let's go to Jerusalem and the Son of Man and then blah, 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 blah. Right? They miss exactly what he says. It's like they're hearing impaired in terms of, we just want to hear about the good things. We, we know that you're a king. We know that you can make food out of nothing. We know that you can raise people from the dead. Hallelujah. Now let me sit at your right and left. Now here's the thing. As you study this text, and we know people generally... Honor comes at the expense, at least worldly-wise, honor comes at the expense of other people. So we seek to, to lift ourselves up and to really kind of not care about anybody else. How much do you think they were caring about Peter at this time? The other spokesman of the group, not so much. And if you know human nature, this is the greatest question I, I thought of as I was thinking of the text. What, so they, they come up to Jesus, and I'll try and use the words of the N NLT, but they come up to Jesus and say, Lord, we want you to give us a favor, that, that marvelous word favor. This is far beyond favor. This is a demand, right? And so Jesus, they've been traveling with him for three years, and it seems like these are three-year-olds that are asking the question. Can you imagine if your own three-year-old asks you, Daddy, give us exactly what we want? 
your response probably isn't going to be, well, yes, I will. So Jesus gently, he brings them back and he says, all right, what is your request? Now, here's, here's the fascinating thing. They ask for one to sit at the right and one to sit at the left. I'm an identical twin, okay? And my brother and I, I mean, we battled for everything. Every sense of glory, every sense of honor, whether it be sports, whether it be music, whatever it might be. Here's the thing. If Jesus says, yes, I will do this very thing, they're coming to blows. Because you've got to pick which is one going to be at the right and one at the left, right? That's human nature. I mean, the, the, the request seems so strange, so, so uh, uh, out of left field. Because they've missed exactly what Jesus was talking about. And if he had granted them, look at the disciples' reaction to start with. They thought indignantly about these two. And the two, if, if he had granted it, they would have argued about who was going to sit at the right and who was going to sit at the left. It's human nature. For some reason, we're driven by this pride, this, this want to be looked at, this, this honor that the world will always remember us. For Jesus, you know, he, he's, he says that the road to glory is paved, paved with stones of humility and stones of sacrifice and stones of a bitter cup of suffering and a bitter cup of death. That's what it's paved by, and that's the thing you have to walk upon. Can you do it? Oh, yes, we can do it. And he says, yes, you will. But it's not going to be like what you thought. You know, it's fascinating in our own particular lives, whether it be trying to get a job promotion and put ourselves above everybody else and, and, and speak so highly of ourselves. You think of social media and we, we put up all the great and wonderful things, the, the greatest pictures of who we are. We're narcissistic at our very core because we want honor for ourselves and somebody to say, I love you as much as you love yourself. That's what we try and portray. We try and bring that sense of honor. And deep down, what Jesus is really speaking in the text is, I want to rip this out of you and stuff it in the tomb. Because the honor that is given to you is done in humility. It's, it's the honor that can't be taken away. Those who are the greatest servants in this world, they receive honor. Maybe sometimes nobody even notices, but they receive honor because... It's not about themselves. It's not like they're, they're trying to draw it to themselves. It just happens. You think of, of I can think of, and even look at, at people in this community, that great honor could be given and they didn't try and earn it. I can think of, you know, we, we always talk about Mother Teresa. I mean, was she trying to put herself on Facebook and trying to, to throw her name out to all the world? All she wanted people to do was she was serving in the name of Jesus Christ, King of Kings. And so as we, con we consider the ways that, that we need to, or we have to rip this out of ourselves, we have to also have to understand the disciples' reaction to James and John. It says they were indignant, they were upset, they were uh, righteously inflamed at the fact that James and John would ask this question. But here's probably the reason, because they wanted to ask it first. <laughs> Everybody wants to be in that position. Jesus leading the powerful, mighty king, and you sitting on the left, he takes all the responsibility. You just get the glory. We want that. But in the end, what does Jesus say? He says, the only way that glory and honor is actually shown is the way that I'm going to show it. It's the way that I'm going to take the steps. And you hear this in verses 32 through 34 that I'm going to take this for you, that I'm going to be punched. Can you imagine someone punching Jesus? That he's going to be spit upon, that he's going to be kicked, that he's going to be stabbed, that he's going to be crucified. It's the way of servanthood for all. And finally, he's going to be resurrected from the dead, and he's going to take your sins of pride that leads to some false sense of security and of honor, and he's going to put them in the grave. Generally, when you go to seek honor... When you finally receive it, you're dissatisfied. You want something more. You want something greater. But Jesus says, whoever wants to be first or who wants to be greatest must become servant of everyone. Now, can, you, can you fathom that, that statement in and of itself? To be servant of everyone, even the people that you don't really like. I'd love to be a servant of few. I'd be good at that one. But to meet every single neighbor, wherever you go, whomever you encounter, to encounter them in the name of Jesus the Christ, where there is no honor to yourself, but only honor to the king who is risen. To be servant to all means to be lower than all, means to have some sense of humility that draws you to see 
in each other someone who desperately needs the forgiveness of Jesus the Christ. And that's our gift this day. As we hear this text, as we, as we study this text, to, to, be, to be driven to, to, to understand that, that God rids us of these things and he moves us forth in a great sense of joy knowing that I really don't have any responsibility in this whole matter in, in, an, in, in the fact that Jesus is doing everything. So today as, as we hear James and John's story, as we hear the disciples' story, as, as we hear our stories proclaimed, May we understand the incredible gift it is that Jesus would serve us first and then we're moved in humility to serve the world. In Jesus' most precious name, amen and so be it. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus from now into eternity. Amen.